Good day, grade 10s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author of the Distinction Bound Students Textbooks. Well, uh, welcome to lesson number 61 from the grade 10 textbook. Well, in this lesson, we're just simply going to continue from where we left off in the previous lesson. As always, we are going to start by revising our homework. Right? Explain whether each of the following events represent number one, a change in demand, which is a shift of the demand curve, or number two, a movement along the demand curve, which is a change in quantity demanded. Please take note. Right? Number one, a store owner finds that consumers are willing to pay more for umbrellas on a rainy day well this one goes along with one of the examples i gave in the previous lesson which i was talking about jackets when there's an increase um when when winter uh, comes by that will cause an increase in demand for what for warm clothes so basically that will cause a shift of the demand curve like so this one is definitely a shift so it will be this Okay, because um, it's not caused by price. It's raining, and so people want umbrellas more on that day. And do you notice that it has nothing to do with price? So this will cause a change in demand. This is not a change in quantity demanded. Okay, you, you, you notice that they sound the same, but they are definitely not the same. When uh, XYZ Telecom a long distance telephone service provider uh, offered reduced rates on weekends, its volumes of uh, weekend calls increased sharply. Well, this common sense will tell you this will be a movement along. Okay, wh when I'm doing this, I might confuse you. Okay, it's a movement along the demand curve. Sorry, this line might look like it's another demand curve. Okay, ignore what you see here so basically it's this so that will be from this point to this point that will be a movement along the demand curve the next one people buy more long-term long stem okay those long roses um the weekend of valentine's day even though the price the prices are actually higher which sound like contradictory to the law so this is just like number one this will be a shift of the demand curve. The next one, a sharp rise in the price of oil. You see, whenever we talk about price and price is the reason, that is going to cause a movement along. But if it's something else which is not price, then it will be a shifting of the demand curve. Please take note. Okay, so this one here of oil will be a move a, sh a movement along the demand curve all right let's have the answers there they are let me see number one where is it I'm, I'm basically looking for just the answer all right this will be a shift of the demand curve there we go then this will be a movement along the demand curve then here it will be a rightward shift of the demand curve and this one will be a movement along the demand curve okay exactly the way i said it All right let's go to today's lesson so today's lesson we want to sort of uh understand a bit more as to the the factors that cause a demand curve to either shift to the right and shift to the left so basically we're going to show you a graph uh, that shows a shifting and this time around we are drawing graphs that do not have demand schedules because already you know how these graphs are constructed so work with the assumption that yes there is a demand schedule with um different numbers uh, first different price levels and secondly different quantity possibilities and then from those numbers a demand curve is then constructed so we then say that is the original demand curve then we talk about a couple of factors so okay as i'm talking what i'm saying is this okay we then construct a demand curve now the only thing you are not going to see this time around is a demand schedule because you have it in your mind already that this demand curve 
is not constructed from thin air this demand curve is constructed from a demand schedule so we are not always going to show you a demand schedule whenever you see a demand curve know that it was constructed from a demand schedule which is a set of numbers which shows us the different possibilities like okay price as it goes down what happens to quantity demanded it is changing the whole time so basically yes so we want to show you a couple of factors that could cause this and a couple of factors that could cause that. So when we have this, we'll have something like that. And when we have that, we have something like this. Okay. So let's have a look at the, 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 the factors. So the graph that I'm going to show you illustrates the two basic ways in which demand curves can shift uh which already you know i guess from what i said in the introduction when economists talk about uh increase in demand i said this in the conclusion of the previous lesson but i might need to say it again because it will help you remember they mean a rightward shift of, of the demand curve they don't mean a movement along the demand curve so at any given price consumers demand a larger quantity of the good or service than before and remember this has nothing to do with price this is shown by a rightward shift of the original demand curve say from dd to d1 d1 something like that and when economists talk about a decrease in demand they uh, mean a leftward shift of the demand curve again this has nothing to do with the price Okay, at any given price, um, consumers demand a similar quantity of goods or service that than before. All right, so to understand the shifting of the demand curve, this is shown by a leftward shift of the demand curve. Oh, yes, that's what um, it's a continuation of the previous statement. Okay, what causes the demand curve for coffee beans to shift? uh we have uh, already mentioned two reasons the change in the population and the change in the popularity of uh, coffee beverages if you think about it you can come up with um other things that would be likely uh the causes of the shift of the demand curve for coffee beans well let's start by looking at this one here uh basically this lesson is going to be very very short because it is straightforward and it's something that you have already known and come on there's nothing you don't understand here okay so here this illustrates an increase in demand so whenever you see that this curve you are going to see it in grade 11 you are going to see it in grade 12. in grade 11 we are going to even go further and talk about elasticity of that demand curve we'll you'll see that okay uh, i'm not supposed to be saying it now because it may confuse you okay but other demand curves look like this okay then other demand curves look like this let me say okay assume it's straight sorry then other demand curves look like this you see that okay we'll say um this one is relatively elastic this one would say it's unitary elastic and this one would say it's relatively inelastic then we have other extreme cases where we have one like this and we have one like this okay you don't need to worry about that right now uh because here you are just in grade 10 and all you need to do is to understand that a demand curve is downward sloping but there was a question oh there's another extreme one where a demand curve can be like this kinked okay don't worry about that for now yes there's a reason why it is kinked so we have different possibilities and basically this one the only difference with the kink demand curve is the elasticity of a higher price and the elasticity of a lower price well you don't need to stress sorry i might be confusing you right now but if that confuses you forget i said it okay because what you need to understand is that a demand curve can shift to the right which will represent an increase in demand and also a demand can shift to the left which will cause a, a which is a decrease in demand so let's move on to factors so for example suppose that the price of tea rises this will induce some people who previously drank tea to switch to coffee 
increasing the demand for coffee beans. Economists believe that uh, there are five principal factors that shift the demand curve for a good or a service. Right, the first one will be change in um, in the price of a related good or service. Well, is the good a complement? Is the good a substitute? Okay, so this can be a factor that will influence uh, the shifting of a demand curve when uh, something happens to the other good. Okay, we call that uh, cross elasticity of demand. Okay, just know it like this. You will learn more about it. Okay, the next one is the change in income. Well, when income levels change, uh, there's something could happen to a demand curve. Okay, we call this income elasticity of demand. Again, don't worry much about these two because you will learn them in depth later on. The next one is the change in consumer tastes. Well, consumers may just begin to like something or they may begin to hate something. And uh, uh, nowadays it may be influenced by social media in, in most cases. Uh, I may say that. Yes, it's true. Uh, if you see, so consumer taste may change because of influence. Uh, there are people that influence other people. And in most cases, that would be celebrities, let's say, or, or, or role models, things like that. So those may just ignite, you know, a certain liking for something. And so then demand is going to either increase. So if someone also who is influential uh, says something bad about a certain, you know, thing, uh, it may cause also a shift of the demand curve to the left. Uh, I, I was reading something this morning about uh, Elon Musk. He, he simply announced that Tesla is no longer using Bitcoin, uh, is no longer accepting B Bitcoin as a form of payment for their business, for Tesla cars and whatever it is that Tesla also sells. And that obviously causes a decrease in demand for Bitcoin causing its price to decrease. Okay, I may not be talking about price right now because uh, this is just demand. There's another thing that we'll talk about later on, which is supply. Yes, then price comes because I said this whole thing, we are trying to get to the point of, oh, so this is where price comes from and this is where demand comes from. So consumer taste for something may change because of so many factors. Like I'm saying here, Elon Musk is very influential. So he announced that they are no longer going to accept Bitcoin. So that will cause people to demand less Bitcoin. So in most cases, people will start selling their Bitcoin, trying to run away. And that is definitely going to cause the price to drop. So that's another factor. The next one is changes in expectations. Yes. Maybe expectations on your income, expectations on the future. Yes. If people be, are optimistic, then demand for certain products will increase. If people are pessimistic, dem demand for certain things will decrease. As simple as that. What are people expecting in terms of their income in the coming year or something like that? Or in the economy as a whole? If you expect that your economy is going to go down, then there are certain things that you might need demand more of, and there are certain things that you demand less of. So the demand will shift either to the right or to the left because of what your expectations are, and not just you, but generally uh, consumers. And then the last one we have here is changes in the number of consumers. If there are more consumers for a certain good, for instance, right now, uh, surgical masks were mostly demanded by doctors, but now almost everyone. So there's a change in the number of consumers. So that is definitely going to cause the demand curve for surgical masks to go up as simple as that. All right. Um, although this is not an exhaustive list, like you can come up with other factors that may cause an increase or a decrease. Well, if you have one, please put it down in the comment section and let's hear it. Let's discuss that and, you know, have an interaction or an interaction which will help us both uh, better ourselves. So it contains the five most important factors that can shift demand curves. So when we say that the quantity of a good or service demanded falls, 
as it um, as its price rises all other things being equal ceteris paribus we are we are in fact stating that the factors that shift demand are remaining unchanged well this has brought us to the end as usual we conclude our lessons with homework draw a correctly leveled graph showing the demand for apples on a graph illustrate that illustrate what happens to the demand for apples if a new report from uh, the Surgeon General finds that an apple a day really and truly does keep the doctor away. Well, thank you so much. Uh, as usual, like, subscribe, and um, invite other people to the channel. Thank you so much. God bless.